barbed wire day and today we're just doing a bunch of barbed wire. So, I don't know what else to tell you besides that. <laughs> today is actually really windy. It was rainy, misty, spitty, all that kind of classic stuff. And so we didn't get a lot of video, at least at the beginning, but we're gonna capture some now. There should be some gusts, 20, 30, 40 miles an hour. So I'm gonna apologize in advance if the sound isn't working very well. There's mainly a few steps. First thing that we're doing is we're attaching barbed wire to one of the corner posts. Nathan's doing that. We're dragging it over to the other corner post. And then at that point, I'm attaching the come along. I'm gonna tighten it. We're gonna wrap it, secure it. And then we're gonna do all the staples up against the wood posts as we go down the line. When it was raining and we were waiting to work and getting stuff going, the girls took the post, which had the markings on it, about where every row of wire was supposed to go. We're doing a seven strand, um, about six feet. Um, so they already went around and they marked the posts. We did that every third set or every three posts to try and even it out. Otherwise, every post might have been a little different. So we did it about every third post. And uh, after we tighten it, it's just a matter of stapling to those posts and then filling in the gaps as we go. So the way we're organized is Nathan and Owen are at the first corner post and they're tying these things. They bring... Told you, it's a little windy. So Nathan and Owen over there, they tie them at the corner post. They bring the roll all the way over to me and I'm over here with a come along and Charlotte's helping me here. We wrap, we do everything. In the meantime, Nathan goes back and he starts setting up the next line. Bree and Sandra are two girls and they're in between and they're doing a bunch of stapling and they're helping get the barbed wire as I'm tightening it kind of loose so it's not catching. So in amongst all of this craziness with the wind blowing and everything, we're gonna get some videos. Can't guarantee you how good it's gonna be. We're gonna get the video and we'll try and edit this out so it kind of looks good and show you what we're doing. We're tightening this, and I don't know exactly, honestly, how tight to, to do it, but I do know this high tensile wire doesn't stretch like conventional low carbon steel does on like Red Brand and all that other stuff that's 12 and a half gauge. So this isn't gonna stretch and have issues like that where it's gonna lose its elasticity. So our goal is to stretch it so it's pretty taut, but this run is probably 150 feet, maybe less, I don't know, somewhere around there. But no matter, even if you stretch it, there's a lot of weight on the wire and the wire isn't gonna be off the ground. So you can still move it, you can still do stuff with it, but it will be in the ground. Now, we have a dip right behind me and so it's coming along here and you can kind of see that it's up. So what I'm gonna have the girls do, since they've marked every third, this is the post where they marked. I'm gonna have them come by, put it at the mark and staple it I'm gonna do the same over there, but this gap, we're not gonna staple. This gap we're gonna leave open over where Owen is standing at his post. We can either do that one or the one where Nathan is standing as the brace post. Maybe just the brace post, because I think that one has the marks. Is that right, Bree? Both of them, Both of them have Both marks. Both of them have marks? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then the one where Owen is standing, we'll staple that one. The ones between, because of the dip, we're gonna come back with another barbed wire and wrap it lower at a separate time, maybe next week or some other time. But we're gonna keep this just one constant horizontal. I just don't like seeing barbed wire sag and come up. And then as the tension's there, I just don't want any extra force lifting posts. So we'll just come with an extra barbed wire. The top ones are actually two low ones on either side of the T-post, those are the lowest ones. So the top wire will actually not be touching those two. So the top one girls are not gonna be touched to that one, okay? 
but they'll pick back up on these other ones. So that's how we're addressing the, the dips. So I don't have to squish down and really try and push them and then hammer them at the same time. We'll just come back and do it separate. Stapling these things in with these one and three quarter inch double barb staples to help it stop backing out. Anyway, as we're putting them in, the ones that we're putting at the corner post on either side, we're hammering those all the way in so it actually binds it to the wood. The ones that we're putting on the intermediate line, we're leaving it gapped about like that just above that other barb. The idea being is we want to have this, the wire be able to slide as temperature changes. And also if we ever get to a point where we have to repair it, we can take all the slack out of the entire line hopefully as one whole thing, as opposed to having to do every one in between each of the wood posts, if there's slack. So it's going to be able to slide a little bit, it's going to be a little bit loose, but it's tight on the corners. Ah. This is the uh, barbed wire puller. So this is like this Celtic whatever looking thing. Anyway, the barbed wire slides in this slot. You put it in, you rotate it around when it's on the thin end, then as you pull it, it binds it and you're able to pull it really, really tight. Very, very simple. If you're working with barbed wire and you're having to tighten it, just simple, cheap tool that does great. You just connect it to the other side that come along and it does great. After a while, give it a little wiggle down there because as we're coming up there's a couple trains of thought if you build it from the bottom the barbed wire you put on every successive row interferes with the one below it so it catches and so you got to kind of loosen it up so you don't have those problems other people would say build it from the top and come down and the reason I don't I don't want to do that is because when you put it at the top and you get it tight the posts haven't quite squeezed in yet and so as you keep tightening all the other ones down below it sometimes your posts can actually squeeze in further and then your top line has more of a droop so if you build it from the bottom up you can keep getting it tighter and tighter as you're going and it stays tight because you're compensating in the areas it gets looser and looser um, since I have a bunch of people helping it's easy enough just to have them help pull it off and wiggle it a little bit so I'm building it from bottom up. Once it's tight, now we go wrap it.
if I had fencing pliers, I could grab it in between the jaws, put it here and just pry it. Those work better than a crowbar because a crowbar just has that V and it can slip out one-handed. So, but if I had those pliers, I could crimp it around it, ply it and hold it and then just staple. Um, solo, wrap it twice, kick some barbs in and then staple it. This one's tight. Now we gotta release the come along. Rotate. That guy comes off. Unhook our little thing. That guy comes off. Now that I've wrapped it twice, I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna wrap this, just a simple wrap, keeping it tight, probably four, five, six, a good distance. And then we cut it off and we're done. We just leave the point hanging into the fence gap so that way it doesn't stick out too far. This is what cut me here. So if I was smart, I would probably actually trim this to a shorter amount. But I never had a cut until I rolled the sleeves up. And uh, I've had this sweatshirt for 25 years and it's getting caught too much. I don't care, I'd rather bleed a little bit, but I don't want this thing torn up before I get to another 25 if possible. By the way, if any of you guys are from Ohio, I don't have animosity. I'm not one of those kinds of fans. Although I don't necessarily root for you too much. I'm not gonna hate you either. And there you have that. Now we just go down and staple. With you, I can be sad. With you, just take my hand and fly up through the dreams where the skies are so clear. With you, I want to stay with you. With you, I love the way that you love me today. Let's run. This is the second shortest, or the, one of the shortest, the last one, and we're out of here. Yeah, I'm tired, so we're all tired. Sun's going down a little bit. I wanted to show you kind of just the aftermath, the uh, the finished article. So um, it looks pretty good, and uh, but let's get down here and check out some of our handiwork. So the bottom, we can see we got two wraps. We, we double wrapped it. We started with coming around and just nailing or stapling in the first wrap and then doing the second one. Um, actually was wrapping the other direction, but it was almost just easier to do the pull it tight, wrap it twice and then staple it. The staple is there to make sure it holds. And then when we have our pigtails here, we're actually just added benefit of strengthening it but I mean that's not really gonna be the main thing it's gonna be that staple now you can see the gap that formed as we tensioned it and as I mentioned last time if you tension it from the bottom 
and work your way up, the top is going to squeeze it more than the bottom will. So if you tension the top first and then you work your way down, yes, you don't fight the barbed wire as much, but um, you can get slack at the top forming after you do all these next ones as the gap forms. Now, is that super critical? No. Okay, just pick it. Do you want to go top to bottom or do you want to go bottom up? Um, I just wanted to go bottom up as I told you before. So um, I'm going to look down the line. Now the posts are not equally out of the ground. There's some variation and so it kind of makes it look a little weird at times. But you know for the most part it looks pretty good. We did the approach, staple every third post and then come back and let the gap, whatever it's lying at, fill in the gaps. I only had 10 pounds of staples. Um, tractor Supply wouldn't let me buy any more than that. So we didn't do all of the post intermediate. We put almost a whole box on this first line. So the others, we're gonna have to come back and fill in the gaps a little bit and staple them later on. But we've kind of got them set out the way that we wanted. So everything's looking pretty good so far with just some touch-ups next week and the week after. I'm kind of using the barbs to my advantage to kind of help stabilize it as we wrap it. And the bottom one's always the roughest because we're dealing with this brace wire and we've got to make sure that either we're going to go above or below or between somehow to make sure that when we come back that we have room to wrap and we don't get, you know, we don't want to be coming across here. Um, we want to just get that straight. So it looks like going between or underneath it all might be the best option. Chica, I don't think you can do a double. I, I don't think I can either. What happened the last time you tried it? I caught this. You caught the claw, huh? Yeah, stabbed myself. It's fun. Did you bloody yourself? Yeah. I lick myself too. Lick it, lick it good. The life is the best cure. Always. Spin a little faster. Well, that's scary. Not that fast. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Ha! Oh. I it like this. <laughs> We're so proud. All of our hopes and dreams and wishes for our children are coming true today. Last one, the cavalry is coming down the way. Strand number seven. Woo -hoo. Trip up the girls, they made it. All done. Got all seven. The kids are just finishing up nailing some staples. Um, anyway, so I wanted to kind of cover with you a couple things. You know, at the very beginning, when it was all misty and everything, we just wrapped the come along which we already put away but anyway it has a pulley system on the end so it's got a hook and so the it wraps itself through the little pulley um, and we just wrapped that and lashed it to itself because we didn't bring a chain and that's not what you want to do okay we quickly saw that all the this, this cable was just grinding into the wood it was getting hard and difficult to turn one part but not both lines would pull so at that point, we're like, oh crap, what are we going to do? We need a chain. And if people put a chain around it and just latch it, it's quick, easy on, off. Well, Owen, at one point, had mentioned, hey, can we take some of this high tensile wire, just barbless, and do, you know, use this? And I'm thinking, no, probably not. Right, Owen? What? Yeah. So, anyway, kind of building off of Owen's idea, thinking on the fly, we made a little halo. And this is actually really pretty good. You can see where we've been pulling on it. But, you know, we would just wrap it around the post and it would just tie it to itself and that made this day go by so much faster. Not ideal, but hey, thinking on the fly, use what you got to try and do something. And this was a good idea that Owen kind of came up with that we spawned a new kind of abbreviated idea. It would be nice if this didn't have the barbs, but we didn't have a bunch of other stuff. so. This just technically sat right over and we did it. So, you know, in the middle here, we can slide it up.
but when we got to here we had to undo this whole thing and then do it again for the top but otherwise this this really worked good so all right next point there are a bunch of little ends that come about and when you have barbed wire and you want to repair barbed wire or other things like that i did a video previously if you didn't see it about the texas fence fixer um and that's where you take this loose barbed wire and you got to retighten it and so it grabs it and pulls it tight well you use a bunch of these guys that are like 18 inches and so as you're doing your barbed wire fence you're going to have trimmings that you have save some of this stuff okay you're going to use it later on and you know it's just always handy to have it doesn't necessarily go bad so point save some of these things and keep them we talked before about how i wanted to use cattleman's 14 gauge wire four point barbed wire and we didn't have any and so all we had was the other stuff so we actually only used we came in with four big ones and we had like a half a roll left over which got us the first about three strands um, over there so we used we have one full one left so i think we only used about two and a half this is what we had left over um, you're going to end up with a bunch of these guys that are little guys that aren't quite a full strand um, if i wasn't in such a time crunch to do it you can blend these together tip to tip and keep going um, so again don't throw these little guys away you can use them and there's they're good for repairs and other things you're gonna get a lot but um there is value in keeping some of these around so anyway three and a half strand or rolls um so about a mile worth of fence about stay tuned with us as we wrap up this thing but making a bunch of progress and i do want to say you know i can't do this without nathan coming over owen brie you know these people my daughter my two kids anybody like that charla so and this would be so much more difficult on my own so appreciate all their help kudos to them they did a lot of good work today so we'll catch you next week stick with us at black acre ranch and i'll talk to you later with you i can be sad with you just take my hand